The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look here at the German DAX on a daily chart. Uh, as you can see, it just completed a very large ABCD, and of course, it is coming in from a much higher level, so that does make that a Gartley pattern. Uh, if we were to take this to a little bit shorter time frame, like the 60-minute, you'll notice that you'll see the same type of pattern but broken down a little bit differently. You still see the ABCD structure and you still see the ratios, but it's just condensed going back to April, April, <laughs> going back to uh, May the 7th. So that does cover, you know, several months here uh, so that you're able to see uh, the pattern. So this is where uh, it should rally from. In fact, whether it does or not, you know, we have to wait and see because it actually started okay. And that's uh, pretty much what you'd like to do. Now, I would like to mention something in the headlines from Bloomberg this morning from one of our very, very dear friends and frequent guest, Alan Greenspan. And if you'll notice here, Alan says there is no stock excess but warns of a bond market bubble. Folks, if I've learned anything in this business, uh, listening to what the Federal Reserve says will get you in more trouble than you might want to think. So uh, just remember that sometimes uh, they have an opinion just like everybody else. And if you remember that book that I keep on my desk, The Experts Speak, 700 pages of people that uh, say things that just don't happen. I happen to be in that book 263 times. That's why I keep it on my desk. So it's just a person's opinion. That's, uh, you know, that's right. Like he will be right when he's right. That's exactly right. So we'll see if that is uh, actually the case. We'll watch it uh, unfold. But anyway, the bonds still look. Uh, bearish. By the way, folks, we've got a really great guest today. Uh, we're going to have Cy Monley of Silvius Financial. Uh, he's a very um, active uh, trader and hedger. He uh, had this company uh, manages farms for people, so he'll be he'll be on to talk to us about the crop, the information that he uses, how he uses it, and uh, he was the first. Uh, his, his his first job was with none other than Richard Anderson, our frequent guest from Anderson Capital Management, back about, oh, must have been about 30 years ago. So um, they've been in the business for a long time together. So he'll be he'll be a lot of fun to talk. He's a super nice guy, and he was able to come out here and visit me for a week here uh, in Arizona a few months ago, and it was uh, very pleasant to meet him. But, boy, he's, he's a really active fellow, let me tell you. Okay, let's take a look here. We talked about Alan. Greenspan here for a little bit. That doesn't really mean much. It's just telling you that that's what's in the news. And believe me, that that's all it really is. We hit some big things yesterday, folks. <clears throat> One of them was the um, crude oil hit that uh, 50 35 level. That was a 61% retracement of the January high of last year, of this year, excuse me, 2017. And of course, we have oil numbers coming today. And we're going to see if that's going to uh, be much of a problem or not, but we'll we'll watch that uh, also. I did want to share with you something that was forwarded to me by our good friend uh, Arch Crawford from Crawford Perspectives, because uh, it, to me it means something. I, I just listened to Tom O'Brien uh, give his review of the market and uh, talked about uh, you know some of these markets that that look a little bit different than they might appear. And if we look at this. Uh, just one second here. We'll get this over here. There we go. If we look at the new highs to new lows, New York Stock Exchange Index 10-day, you'll notice here uh, that it was back on July the 16th when we made a secondary high from May of uh, 2013, but uh, we still haven't broken that out. Folks, that, that, should, be, that should be flying. Uh, the advanced decline line is going up, but it's it's going up at a very, very slow pace. So uh, there's not a whole lot of participation in some of these uh, markets. So uh, be uh, just a little bit aware of that. Uh, yes, we are talking about the, um, the, the bonds this morning. We'll get into that 
uh, right now. Uh, the bonds uh, still look much lower to us. All we've had here is, you know, these little uh, bouncy little rallies that really don't go very where go very far. And uh, to me, that tells us that we're we're heading down. You know, we're, we are making a little Gartley here this morning, but to me, it still looks like we're heading lower because that big level that we hit, hold on one second here, and um, that number, uh, the 786 is down here at 52.12, and I believe we went through that already, and so that's another sign, plus we had this wide ranging down today. What's important about the bond chart from a technical perspective, folks, if you remember that high we had at the 155 level, then we had the big break. Then we had the 50% retracement, and what that does, uh, just by using simple geometry, that sets up an ABCD pattern, and the AB leg, it goes from 155 down to 152, that's three handles, so if you take three handles off of the 153, it's going to get you down to that uh, 150 to 149 level, that's another three handles lower than where we are now uh, in the uh, bond market, and that is a pretty big... Uh, Pretty big uh, move here, so we'll see. But the um, the 12 5210 is correct, uh, Mr. P. It is uh, the exact 78 percent retracement of that previous move. That's where the Gartley is coming in. If it's going to hold, it should hold uh, at that level. That's uh, that's the main thing, you know, to keep uh, you know to keep a close eye on. Now, yesterday afternoon, late, uh, we had a big move here in the euro. I wanted to bring this up because we we talked about this yesterday. The fact that we had this 382 level uh, in the euro uh, yesterday, and uh, you'll notice that the high last night, if uh, you'll notice the, the little price up there that you see at one um, 118.44, that was the exact high. And we're trading it uh, right around the 118 level right now, so it's backed off about 44 pips. What happened last night, folks, that we had um, – Four different major cross rates hit major numbers. One of them, of course, was the Japanese yen that we looked at. It exactly well. It, 110 was the number we were looking for. It went to, to it went to uh, 99.96 and then has rallied 60 pips uh, from that level. Uh, the British pound also looks very interesting here because we had the same situation going on you know, in the British pound yesterday, and I think that's another one that uh, should be. Uh, should be watched rather closely. I think we can get it right here. Yes, here we go, because it also hit the exact number uh, last night, which I think is, uh, you know, rel relatively important. And, uh, you know, we'll see if that's it. By the way, the dollar index, folks, this is the biggest uh, streak of losing, um, uh, of down move since 2011 in the dollar index. It's two thousand six years since the dollar index has backed off that much. So that's historical in itself. But, uh, you know, right now we're looking at these patterns on a short-term basis because they're, that's the easiest way to trade them because you only have to uh, risk a very, very small amount on these. Usually you're trading a $100,000 contract. And sure enough, you can trade it for, you know, pretty much uh, a very, very small amount. And that's what the whole secret to this is. It's keeping your losses, you know, relatively small uh, as you go through some of these. And, and, and that's also very important, uh, as, we, as we already know. We're going to take a little break here, 877-927-6648. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS Profile 
proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, I posted the uh, chart for the uh, crude oil as you can see over this uh, past. Uh, move that we've had, these ABCD moves, uh, we went up and made the 61% retracement of the January high. Uh, we've only backed off about 60 or 70 pips so far this morning, but, you know, it's still early in the day. Now, one thing I would like to talk to you folks about, you've got some really smart people here at TFNN, and I need your help, but let me tell you why. This morning, I woke up around 3 o'clock, and I checked the markets, and I saw that the Dow was up 110 points. So the first thing I did was to look at the top 17 Dow stocks to see which one was causing the 110-point move like we had with uh, Boeing Airlines. Folks, there's something wrong here because there was not one Dow stock that was up more than a half a dollar, and some of those weren't even up at all of the big 17. There were eight of those 17 that were not even up. Uh, Boeing was down. Um, uh, Caterpillar was down. McDonald's was down. Uh, IBM was up 10 cents. Um, the biggest one up was Apple, 44 cents. So that does not equate to a 110-point move. So I don't know if it's related to algorithmic trading or what it is, but uh, those stocks were not uh, were not telling us that the Dow was up 110 points. That and Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs was down. That's the biggest mover of the Dow. That's the highest price one. And so um, I, I don't understand it, but all I know is it's very unusual to see the Dow up that much, but the stock's not up that much. I just, uh, and I, I don't know, you know, whether it's related to, um, you know, uh, algorithmic trading or not. I really don't understand. Uh, but, you know, if someone has that answer, if you just drop me a note or call me, I would really love to know, uh, you know, how that is, uh, how that is going on. So we'll watch this, uh, of course. Now, someone's asked a question, of course, about the um, – um, the, uh, hold on one second. I'll get it up here because I wanted to uh, – um, 
it was about the bonds. And what I'm saying, the bonds here were trading right at the 78% retracement of this last move at 152.15, uh, 14. If we get much below 152, that sets up 150 to 149, in my opinion. And it's still a little bit early, but we'll, we'll pay close attention to that. You know, as we as we look at this, another question that asked about the advanced decline line that um, we posted from Arch Crawford, folks. Um, that that's just an indicator that shows what the market is doing as far as you know which the new highs to new lows. You know, if you got more new highs to new lows, it marks on a, on the chart, and that's all you're looking at. Well, usually, when the market is going up, you're making new highs all the time. This has not happened. Uh, the last two and a half weeks, uh, we've seen nothing but, uh, you know, m moves to the downs. I mean, you know, lower tops and lower bottoms. That That's usually not an indication of a big move, you know, coming uh, in stocks. Yet the Dow Jones is going, you know, crazy to the upside. Um, the IWM is lagging uh, a bit. And, of course, the uh, New York Stock Exchange Index is also lagging a bit. But the Dow Jones is the one that is pulling the cart. And remember, that's only 30 stocks. And they are price weighted. They're not cap weighted. So the higher the price, the more that you have to it. Uh, so you'll notice that the price that moves the market the most or could move the market the most is Goldman Sachs. And then you have these other really expensive ones of which Boeing and you have um, United Healthcare and 3M. I mean, there's a lot. IBM, that, well, IBM is in a downtrend, but there's, um, you know, three or, well, there's more, there's about 10 of them that are in the triple digits, the high triple digits. So uh, they're able to, uh, by high triple digits, I mean, you know, in the 170, 180, 190 uh, level. But those are the ones that, you know, actually move the Dow. In the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ 100, you know, you've got those, you know, those, the, the FANG stocks. And of those, of the NASDAQ 100, 12 stocks do the whole thing. I mean, it, it's basically the whole thing. That's basically what you're watching. Now, I wanted to share a chart from one of our listeners up in um, the, the, the distant north of Canada. He had a question about the mid-caps. Uh, this is an ETF for the mid-cap. And we'll put this up here to let you look at it because you'll see here, hold on here. There we go. We'll put this up here. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, there it is. There's the mid-cap ETF. Um, Steve, uh, Steve uh, I, I have to question that. Uh, I have to question that thing that the best performing since uh, uh, 116 are the XAU. I, I, I don't – Hang saying I can certainly understand, but not the XAU. That's the gold-silver index, and, and gold and silver have been coming down. Could you double-check that one for me, Steve? Because I, I don't think that that will uh, – that is correct. In fact, I'm. I don't. Uh, okay, but how could it be up 88 percent? I mean, it's in a downtrend. I don't understand that. That uh, that. Well, <laughs> hey, Steve, I I'm just saying I don't understand it. So uh, you know, bear with me on that. I know you do a lot of great work, and you're you know a consummate researcher. So we'll take a look at it. Um, well, we'll see how this all works out. And we'll go from there. Yes, the, the Canadian dollar, uh, excuse me, let's get back to the business here. The uh, cable, which is the uh, uh, the British pound, hit the exact number last night. It was rather unusual. Uh, it, well, it hits it a lot of times sometimes, but, you know, we'll, we'll get it up here to take a look at it because this is what we were watching yesterday. If you recall, uh, the actual number hit it exactly. And uh, we'll watch this uh, as we put this up here. Uh-oh, hold on here. Oh, you know what, Steve? You know you could be. You, you, you said that is right. You're absolutely right because that was uh, – you're absolutely right because I saw uh, – all I saw was 116, and that was the December – December bottom of 2015 when gold was at 1,070. So you're spot on. That XAU uh, did do that. Um, thank you very much. That is that is correct. But you know it's been in a downtrend here for the past you know six or seven months. And gold you know backed off from the 61 percent retracement yesterday, as did silver. Whether it's going to continue to do that or not, you know we'll have to uh, have to wait and see because it's got a chance here. If we can get this Christmas gold above 1285, it's got a really good chance of, of going uh, a great deal higher. 
That's what I would be watching. But anyway, if anybody has an answer why the, the Dow could be up 110 points without the stocks being up, uh, I'd like to know the answer to that because I still can't figure that one out. And I went through each one of them just to be sure what I was seeing. I still couldn't understand it. So we'll do one thing at a time. We're going to have a, in a, one minute here. We're going to have a break, and then we're going to have Cy Monley from um, Sylvia's Financial uh, coming up. And then we'll, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're right, Mike K. It only goes up. It's the only thing that never goes down, which we've seen before in, in all of these others. But, you know, it's Isaac Newton's law, folks, just a matter of when, not if. That's the, that's the key thing to remember. Uh, we can see here with this, um, this is the big uh, ABCD here in the, um, in the Dow that I did when I was looking at it last night. It went a little bit higher than that. Um, it got up to be about 110. Here it was up about 107. I think it got up to about 115. No, I think at 120 uh, at one time. But, uh, you know, we'll see if it's going to uh, continue up. And it certainly could because, you know, we've, uh, we've gone higher. And the other indices are not, you know, moving as much, but it doesn't make any difference. Uh, the Hang Seng is another one. We can see the Hang Seng very easily. Just take a quick look at this one. This is something that we talked about yesterday. Here's the Hang Seng. You know, that's been in a really strong trend since 2016. That's, that's been a monster. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have Cy Monley of Sylvius Financial out of Chicago, Illinois. Cy, are you there? Yes, sir. Morning, Larry. How are you this morning? I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm very good. Uh, why don't you tell the folks who hired you first in this business? Because they're big fans of Rich Anderson. <laughs> Rich was your first job, wasn't it? Yes, sir. It was. Yeah. How was it? How did it work? How did it work working with him? <clears throat> you know, um, Rich was fantastic. He really put uh, put my feet to the fire. I remember as a young man coming out of college, um, not really understanding the market. I tell you what, Rich sure gave me a uh, heck of a lesson there for a year while I was in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. Now tell the folks what Sylvia's Financial does, and, and uh, once you do that, I have a couple questions from some of our listeners. So what is it sure. that uh, Sylvia's Sylvius does? Rich, or uh, Larry, what we try to do is we take a very disciplined and analytical approach to helping farmers manage their portfolio. So what we've done is come up with a software program where we, we want farmers looking at three things. Um, we have what's called our encompass uh, view, and you, you look at a farmer in two axes, yield and price. So if you take their input costs, you take all of their puts and calls and cash sales and their insurance, that's a big one. Uh, our business partner is the largest crop insurance agency in the U.S., so insurance is a big decision for a farmer. Not a lot of people understand how it works. But you take all these variables, you take all of these things or silos farmers are making decisions on, and you dump it in, and our software look gives them a readout, right? You say, okay, that seems fairly simple, but it's not, uh, because a farmer needs to have that view, so we give them that view, right? We give them that what that yield and price axes will look like at the end of the year. So every time they're making a cash sale or buying a put, we want to know how that affects their farm, right? So if you're going to spray or you're going to do something, gosh, you, you might want to look at how that's going to affect um, your end-of-year outcome. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing, uh, Larry, is we're giving a farmer that view. And then what we mm -hmm. come on top of it, we say, all right, that's great. Now a farmer knows um, at $4 corn, he's making $40 an acre. We say to them, the other two views we give them is, okay, how hedged are you with all of your decisions, buying puts, buying insurance, making cash sales, how hedged are you? We give them what we call a hedge track. Now a farmer can see, okay, I'm 40% hedged. The second thing on top of that is we say, how hedged should you be? Right? That's a big one. How hedged should you be? Well, we come on top and we've got our own proprietary process for each farmer. It's time and it's profitability. Our view, Larry, is the more profitable you are, the more hedged you should be. Not sold, but protected. If you look at statistics, um, historically speaking, you have four years that go down under the cost of production and one year that goes up pretty big, right? So if you take a five-year or ten-year average, um, the farmer better be protecting when they get profitable. If you get a big run-up, that's fine. If he's 50% hedged and corn goes to $6 and he gets a $5 average, great. You know, break even $4, that's wonderful. So we, we really try to take an analytical and disciplined approach to that, Larry. Asai, one of the questions that someone's asking us is, uh, who is the largest crop insurer uh, in the United States? So, okay, we're an agency, so we're a broker, right? We're a non-bank, so we're the largest, what we call independent agency. So we have a hundred and plus agents running around. So we like to consider we are. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, wow. uh, we, we, uh, we don't hold risk, right? So mm -hmm. we don't take the risk. We're not what's called an AIP. We're purely a, uh, a, a agency running around trying to sell crop insurance. We get really neat software uh, that breaks it down for the farmer, Larry. Mm -hmm. um, so we like to think, you know, we are. There might, um, there might be some others bumping up next to us, but we're pretty big. Well, that's good. Now, this helps uh, the, the farmer when you have all this software, when you go to the bank and he needs money for his crop. Doesn't uh, the bank take a look at those figures and uh, makes it a lot easier? I tell you, and, and all of our software, Larry, gives that uh, gives uh, people working with farmers visibility. The mm -hmm. farm, not just the bank, but the farmer's wife and the and the and the the the, the um, landowners. You know, we've got mm -hmm. a lot of people that like looking at our software. Well, that's good. Now, Cy, you you, you told me once that you had one uh, one farm was almost a quarter of a million acres. Oh, yeah, we've got a couple of huge farms like that, uh, Larry. Wow. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of uh, commercial farmers, mm -hmm. um, you know, hedge funds putting stuff together that they want to buy land, um, but they, they're just using the lease. And we come in and say, hey, look, there's more efficient ways to do this, right? Wow. And there's a couple of private guys that have that type of land as well. 
How about the, the, you know, we've always heard, you know, farmers are like a cattlemen, you know, they go long the futures, long the cash, you know, a Texas hedge. But do you have, uh, do you have farmers that actually do speculation? Very little. I tell you, um, you think so, but um, I, I would I would say, Larry, 90% of them want to do a good job marketing, right? The other 10%, wow. yep, they, they do They do have speculations, and they'll swing around. And that's where our, what we call like, uh, we call it the beacon, right? How hedged are you? How percent hedge should you be? You know, if you've got a guy um, that's making $100 an acre, and that's a good year for him, he better be hedged. You know, and our job is to make sure he's looking at that. If he's not, he's like, no, I'm really bullish. I'm, I'm 0% hedge. We're going to have a talk with him. You know, say, sure. hey, look, you understand you're, you are way too speculative here. Yeah. Um, so I tell the folks uh, how you get, because you know, you've been sharing some of the stuff with weather and, and fundamentals and stuff. Uh, you, you must have a tremendous amount of um, uh, expense every month just using the services that help you with weather and, and uh, supply demand and stuff like that. Oh yes, um, we do. We, you know, and two, we uh, um, we like to pay for those things. But I tell you, Larry, it's it's just information. Um, mm-hmm. If if you just get down to the statistics and data, you really don't need a lot of that. Um, mm-hmm. If you're looking at profitability and time, and you just take, if we say we try to tell people take your bias out. Yeah, you're always bullish. You have an asset, mm-hmm. but take your bias out. If it's a hundred dollars okay. an acre is good for you, and and it's let's say December eighteen corn was at four fifty four sixty, and we were doing some structured product things. Farmers make a lot of money at that if it's a four dollar break even, and so we'll look at some things. And well, you've helped me, Larry, on thinking about how markets are overvalued, undervalued. That sure helps, rather than just thinking about looking at weather fundamentals, because that just changes on a day to day basis. It's really um, just information. It, it shouldn't help you block in profitability. I see. We have a question from one of our uh, uh, listeners in the room here that does a great deal of grain trading. His question is, uh, how, how do you handle the CBOT options uh, as, as far as illiquidity? Are you you're okay with uh, the options uh, that you do with, that, that you do some of these transactions with? Are they liquid enough? I tell you, yeah, you know, um, corn, very liquid, beans, liquid, um, wheat, pretty liquid. Uh, the, our, our big crops are corn, right? We're probably, uh, you know, 60%, 70% corn firm, you know, and then mm-hmm. 20% beans and 10% uh, wheat. So they're very liquid. And the ones that are not, you know, the one that's screaming this year is Minneapolis wheat, right? That's, that's not very liquid. So that's hard yeah. to, to, to do stuff. Yeah, it is. Of course, you're from Minneapolis, aren't you? Yes, sir. I'm from uh, yeah. East Grand Forks, Minnesota. Graduated uh, University of Minnesota, Golden Gold. Oh. That's how I started with Rich. Oh, wow, that's good. Uh, when I was when I was in college, uh, there was a great player named Paul Geal. He was a baseball and football player. Uh, it was a, I think he won several big awards, but I remember uh, uh, him very well. Uh, let, let me ask you one other question that someone's uh, talking about here. And then we have a we have a den here where a lot of traders share information and stuff. And we'll see how things. We'll take a little break, Cy, and we'll be right back with a few minutes. Do you have okay. a few more minutes? Sure. Great. Thank you very much. We'll be back with Cy Monley and Sylvia's Financial in just a moment. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. 
On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts and keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The fund Funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back and we're talking with Cy Monley, Sylvia's Financial. Cy, we have a question about Minneapolis wheat. Uh, do sure. you think the high is in for the year on Minneapolis wheat? I do uh, for the next couple months. So you've got the September small grains report. Um, you know, we have large clients in North Dakota. It is bad. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think there's two things. There's yield and abandonment. And so we don't, both think they're going to be down. Um, but it's going to be hard for that uh, wheat to take out 850 unless it's really bad. And why is that? It's because global uh, supplies are pretty big. Um, we saw Canada to just pomish the P&W. That's a Pacific Northwest and a cash market. Uh, so Canada had some stuff to sell. Uh, the way we were wrong, uh, Larry, is if we take out the highs, is is if you get oversold, right? Let's say Canada sold, and oops, it is a bad crop in North Dakota. Um, to take out those highs, you really need new bull news. You need the shorts to get caught. Um, you need something else to add on. It can happen. I'd give it a 20% chance of happening, taking out the highs. Okay. Okay, now the, uh, one other question. Well, we have two other questions here. What is your forecast here for harvest time coming in for corn and beans? Uh, can you give us a rough idea of what you're looking at? Yeah, harvest price, I would say, um, you know, we're using something closer to 165 yield in corn, so it's going to be hard for corn to go above 4 bucks, is my opinion. Um, below 350, a lot of insurance guys get paid, so I think you're stuck. You know, if you see corn take a peak under 350 this time of year, let's say you're going to September 1st, gosh, a lot of guys are getting insurance checks, they don't sell cash. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think corn goes much below there. Beans are different. Uh, we're short mm -hmm. beans here today. Um, you do got a big demand uh, underneath the market in China, Larry. You really do. Mm -hmm. So I'd be careful pressing beans underneath 950 um, in front of the growing season because we know this weather can change. That's for sure. Cy, this, this is an interesting question that someone just asked. On a 200-acre on a farm that, that a farmer is uh, growing corn, what, what kind of money does he make on uh, 200 acres? What kind of money does he make? So it really depends on where he is in the um, nation, right, Larry? So let's say he's in um, North Carolina. Okay, that's got a different um, land cost, rent, and different yield. So if you're in Iowa, land really good, rent is higher. So it really depends on where you are. Nebraska, irrigated. Okay, higher cost, but known yield. Why? Because when you're watering it, you get a lot of sun. Gosh, you, you know your yield. So you really got to understand where your farm is. You know, we know these wow. farm spots all over the nation. Yeah. So to give you an answer, um, it, it, it depends there again. We look at our software, look at your portfolio, mm -hmm. right? What are your costs? What are your yield? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what are your um, where grain prices for you? Do we still have small farmers out there or are most of them conglomerates now? 
you know, you, they they are getting um, pretty consolidated, Larry. They really are. Um, the, the guys that I think that are speculators and, and kind of go for it, the, the, the smaller farmer, right, that has to push it, um, they don't last very long. You know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you're all in and all out, eventually you're all out. So the small farmers are getting eaten up. Wow. What about, uh, you know, the price of land, your, your farmland? Is it still going up? It's come down. Um, it's come down in a certain areas. Um, you know, last couple of years, corn hovering around $4 isn't really bullish, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's been hard for guys to make money. Um, and, and so now I think uh, the, the interesting part in there about the inter- is going to be inflation. Right, if interest rates keep going, uh, keep going up, gosh, this could be you know a dollar going down. This could be an interesting time for uh, commodity prices and land for us. Mm-hmm. Well, th- there's one other question here, and then we'll let you go because I know you got to get back to work. Uh, no, do we okay. have an inf- do we have an influx of folks uh, from foreign you know from foreign countries that are coming in wanting to get involved in our uh, you know agricultural and, and futures uh, business? Uh, I know the uh, hog business was taken over pretty much by. Uh, was it Southfield or whatever? South, yeah. whatever that. Yeah. yeah. But do we have a lot of that, or is it just sporadic? Oh, gosh, Larry, that's a tough question. Um, you know, I've got a relationship with Costco, who's uh, the big China buyer, and they they try to um, build elevator systems here to procure their grain directly, and it, they didn't do so well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's hard. You know, it's uh, the U.S. is still a pretty um, tight market. Yeah, yeah, you have some big purchases, but. Um, as of today, um, the U.S. farmer is in a pretty good position. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. Listen, I want to thank you for being our guest, and maybe around crop time uh, this fall we'll have you on as a guest again, if you don't mind. And uh, thank you so sure. much for being on. It's very, very interesting. I mean, we really enjoyed this. We don't get this type of information too much, so it was, well, we never get it. So thank you very much. Larry, let me know how I can help. Hey, thanks a lot, buddy. That was Cy Monley of Sylvius Financial of Chicago, Illinois, formerly of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, Let's take a quick look at this chart that we just posted for the soybeans. As you can see, they're coming down sharply. Uh, We're looking at around 960 in November beans, folks. We have a big number down there. So take a look at it. It, They're trading, uh, you know, 980, something like 20 more cents to go. Ideally, what we'd like to see that come in is in seven days when we have the lunar eclipse and the full moon. That would be um, mother god and country if we if we got that. So whether that's going to be the same or not, we'll be able to see it. But watch it very, very closely um, at this uh, 960 level, as you can see on this chart. We'll update this as we go through here. Uh, but they are starting to weaken here across the boards. Fortunately, you know, the patterns here have been telling us, especially in soybean oil, it was telling us that we were major, major resistance coming in in some of these. So just watch that very closely. I need to get back to a chart that we were doing right before the break. I didn't get to discuss it, and that was this mid-cap uh, ETF. And I wanted to show the pattern here. Um, we'll put this up here so we can take a look at it. And uh, hold on today. You'll see it. There we are. You'll notice that we had a really nice butterfly pattern here on Friday, a down day on Monday. So that is a butterfly pattern. Uh, I also, I didn't draw in the big ABCD from March uh, to the November low, which is at the election, and then the move up. That's a perfect ABCD move, folks, in, pr- in price and time. So in other words, from the March uh, to the September high and from the no, uh, s- September low, uh, to the high we made in July, those that's equal. So that's a very, very interesting thing. Now, this was, chart was sent to us by one of our listeners uh, in Canada. I have no idea what that stuff is uh, out there on the right. Uh, I guess it's, um, it's Peter Stottlemyre's Peter Stottlemyre's work, and it looks like a cloud, uh, Ichimuchi cloud, which I always like the name of that one. Anyway, that's uh, that's what the pattern looks like. Whether it's going to be uh, that exciting or not, we'll have to uh, wait and see. Actually, folks, uh, having a pretty good day in crude oil. If you sold some of that, it's down a thousand bucks. That's a that's a nice uh, nice piece of change for a short move. So. And that might be the start of it. You know, one never knows, but we'll keep a close eye on it. The key number to watch here in the NASDAQ 
folks, is 58.70. Uh, uh, that's yesterday's low. If we take that out, we're right at the 61% retracement now here at uh, this 58.90 level. But if we take out that 58.72, that sets up 57.75 on a big ABCD. And if the Dow ever sneezes, uh, the NASDAQ's going to get pneumonia because uh, it's the weakest. And when the markets turn, the weakest go down far faster then they went up, so and they did go up pretty fast. So keep an eye on that one. That's a very interesting one. We've had a big rally here uh, in the bonds uh, from that uh, 152.15. I want to congratulate a couple people in the room that bought that. Uh, it was right at a 78% retracement and held, so we'll see. We'll be right back, 877-927-6648. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Basil Chapman will be giving a two-series webinar Wednesday, August 22nd and Wednesday, August 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Can sector rotation buoy the market into 2018? Each time the market feels it's ready to have a sharp decline, formerly weak sectors rally to hold the market up. This two-webinar series will be free for Basil's opening call subscribers, and non-subscribers will also receive his daily newsletter for one month free as a trial subscription. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to Basil's daily newsletter, The Opening Call, and gain access to his subscriber-only webinar on August 2nd and Wednesday, August 16th from 5 to 6.30 p.m. Can sector rotation buoy the market into 2018? Hi, everyone. This is Basil Chapman, and I'm looking forward to seeing you at my webinar series. To sign up for a 30-day free trial to Basil's daily newsletter and gain access to Basil's webinar, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I wanted to uh, mention uh, the fact that, you know, we've got the Dow is uh, only up 64 right now. It was up 110, 120 one time over the uh, market uh, time. So we're having a nice sell-off here in the grains. All we have to do now is to be patient, and I think we'll get a really good buying opportunity here. Uh, as you noticed, when I posted that chart for the soybeans, and we should put this up here again and take a look at it because this reiter reiterates uh, the importance of looking 
looking at Fibonacci numbers, and you'll you'll see that uh, those retracements. The first one that we had back on July uh, the 23rd, that was a 78% retracement. Then we had one on Thursday, Friday the 28th, 61% retracement. We had yesterday, we had another one at a 61% retracement, and that's what's taking us down towards this. Uh, 962 level, but we don't want to get there until um, the full moon and solar ecl um, lunar eclipse on the 7th. So that's what I would be uh, taking a really close eye on. Um, we'll, we'll watch it closely. But 7th is Monday, so we want to be watching it between Friday and Monday uh, in the beans. We'll do all the work, of course, and send that out to our subscribers in the 24-7 letter because we were expecting this drop, and uh, we want to be ready for it when we're, when we're ready to uh, take a look at it. Okay, now... Uh, someone's asked a question. Uh, what Psy does that Sylvia's Financial, they, they hedge uh, more than 2% of the entire crop production in the United States for corn, wheat, and beans, folks. That, that's a lot. As he mentioned, you know, he had several farms that are in the uh, $200,000 uh, 200, 250,000 acres. Can you imagine a farm, 250,000 acres? The only farm I ever saw that that was big was the Hearst Castle um, that back in Cambria, California, uh, which is a state park now. That was a quarter of a million dollars, but that was from a Spanish land grant, you know, back in the um, uh, eight, uh, late 1800s, 1890. So uh, that's a pretty big farm. Anyway, we'll watch that closely also. We're going to have a, another guest. Uh, Bill Cerubi will be on uh, next week on Tuesday or Wednesday, the 8th or 9th. Uh, he is super bearish, uh, so we'll watch that. 877-927-6648. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.